So I, <clears throat> I'm going to take us through a, a presentation process um, with, with slides um, to, to sort of help us through that process. Uh, I'm going to start with some gratitudes. Um, gratitude to all of you for joining me today and for sharing a passion for permaculture and cultural emergence. Gratitude to all of my teachers and colleagues in permaculture and cultural emergence. Um, gratitude today for the stillness of the day and the sense that there's, there's quite a lot of light behind the clouds and I feel as though that's about to come through. Um, also, I wanted to send out gratitude um, to all of those who are at COP at the minute in Glasgow, um, all of those who've gone along and send out love and gratitude for the work that they're doing um, with a feeling of hope that at this time of transition there will be a willingness to embrace change and we may see policies that start to reflect our own core ethics of earth care, people care and fair share. So, um, as Luby just said, I've recently completed my permaculture diploma and also my facilitator intensive training in cultural emergence. And there's been a really considerable weaving together of these two pathways, particularly over the past couple of years, and significantly both have been facilitated by Luby. So to honour this weaving together, um, I want to explore my own experience of permaculture and cultural emergence and, and look at the way that those two um, different approaches have illuminated my own journey and each other um, as, as I go through this presentation. So I'm going to draw in cultural emergence principles and core routines alongside permaculture, permaculture principles and ethics. And I'm going to start with a little um, a little sort of mandala or a, a pattern if you like. Um, and this, this image combines some of the frameworks which I've used most extensively over the past few years in my designing and particularly over the past couple of years. At the core of it is John Young's Eight Shields um, mandala, um, the sort of wheel of the year and the wheel of the day and the way that it draws in the different energies of day and season. And then around the edge you can see um, Luby's design web. Uh, there's also uh, Holmgren's permaculture principle, principles, Luby's cultural emergence principles, um, and uh, some of Mollison's permaculture principles. Um, and because I've used this so much in my in my design work, this sort of this is a basis. I'm going to use this as a basis as we move through the presentation today. So this is going to be this is going to provide the sort of structure for the for the presentation. And I'm going to start where we are, which is over in the northwest, just past Sawain. Oops, see if it will let me move on. There we are. So here we are in the northwest, at this time which is an ending and beginning, a time of reflection and looking back, and a time of divination and reaching forwards, a place to observe and interact, to be still. Feeling the change of the earth's season, the gentle gravitational pull of the autumn, the fall, the retreating of plant and animal energy, the return to the earth, our going to ground as the plants pull their energy back in. This is root medicine time, a time of introspection, of establishing and strengthening personal roots, a time of letting go and also a point of transformation, a time to honour those who have gone, and especially again today, here we are on the 11th of the 11th and Armistice Day in Europe. And also a time to honour that which has ended and to release and realign ourselves with what we need now. So it feels like a perfect point to be start, to be in this place of ending and the place of beginning. And I'm really grateful for that. And I'm going to start my design stories here with looking back at some of the reflections of what brought me to here. So I was born in the north of England, going right back. And one of my earliest memories is of playing in the cold winter sunshine amongst hay bales in the fields behind the house where we lived. I also remember a long journey south, being lifted into the car half asleep and feeling filled with the excitement of being outside in the dark and feeling like the stars were tickling my toes. By my teens, I was involved in activist networks 
At that stage, I was part of the campaign for nuclear disarmament, but also I was involved with Friends of the Earth, campaigning against devastation of global whale populations. I was very excited by a rainy family outing to the Centre for Alternative Technology in Wales. And I was also getting involved in the work of Child Poverty Action Group and their work addressing social injustice and childhood poverty. So when I found permaculture in my 20s and picked up a copy of Bill Mollison's designer's manual, the permaculture ethics of earth care, people care and fair share felt like home. And they found a place quietly in the background of the various different opportunities that came along through my 20s and my 30s while my children grew around me. My background and my first degree was originally in the creative arts. I'm a folk singer and songwriter and I also love to write and to draw. And the music and artwork I make have always drawn reference to my own relationship with the land, as well as from the social history of land connection that runs through the folk tradition. In my 30s, I trained in counselling and as a homeopath. And I continue to work therapeutically with individuals and groups and I now also draw in gestalt approaches to group work. I also have more than a decade of experience of work with community networks in community engagement and community organising. This work has been largely based around activism to address the climate emergency, working with groups and communities to support the development of activities and projects that enable a lo local participation and build local community resilience. There's a few little snapshots of some of the activities there. Uh, I've studied for my permaculture certificate 10 years ago over the winter weekends of 2010 to 2011. Uh, it was a, a course that Steve Jones taught in Slandrindod Wells and we travelled there and back in the hoarfrost of that incredibly cold winter. I loved Steve's teaching and I felt, as I had with both homeopathy and then later with a Gestalt theory, that here was a way of understanding the world that made sense and that really resonated for me. When I began my diploma five years later, it was a period at a period of change in my life. Luby sort of caught me at a point of change. We'd just moved out of the city where we had lived for more than 25 years to live in a cottage with an acre of land on a hillside. And funding for the small charity that I've been working for or coordinating in Herefordshire was reducing. Work with that organisation had been incredibly consuming, taking a huge amount of my drive and energy. And I was in a need of a change away from the intensity of that work. But I was still really attached to doing the work and to facilitating positive transformative change and really driven by the urgency of the need to respond to the climate emergency, feeling like I needed to do something. But alongside this, I had a strong feeling that what I needed personally was to do less and to be more and to be more nature connected, to explore creative opportunities for artwork and music, to live more slowly and to get to know the land around me, but to do all of this in a way that might still provide a catalyst and support for others. So this is where my diploma journey began, in a place where I was looking for a pause or for a change. Like all of you, the action learning pathway was my first step in the diploma process, establishing the mode of, self, of inquiry and self-directed working that carries us all through our diploma, uh, permaculture diplomas. I was surprised that this opening of the diploma pathway should be so focused on me, perhaps I made it so focused on me, that the inquiry was about me and about my needs, and it took me to what cultural emergence would describe as the core routine of nourish and empower. I'd spent the last decade vigorously moving tools and being very challenged and awake to the climate disaster happening around us. Moving into a place where I was asked to consider myself, my personal and professional needs from this process tripped me up slightly, if I'm honest. I was expecting more tools, more challenge, an outward facing perspective. Instead, my focus was drawn inwards to zone zero, zone one, me and I got a fantastic embodied experience of permaculture zones and the immediacy of me here now and my needs. Working on the action learning pathway and also on a subsequent and related professional development design 
I found the opportunity provided by the permaculture process to reflect, design, implement, reflect in an ongoing way over the course of a couple of years gave me a big picture perspective on something which was otherwise feeling challenging to navigate. The ebb and flow pattern mirrored a pattern I had previously observed in myself and felt instinctively comfortable and illuminating and ultimately catalyzed significant professional change. For these two designs, I drew in some familiar tools, including the NLP logical levels. Developed by Robert Diltz and Todd Epstein, this is a tool widely known by the names neurological levels or logical levels or even stepping the levels. When stepping the levels, this brings a physicality to the process, laying out these six stages on the floor and walking backwards and forwards between the different levels of experience that shape us, recognising when elements that help or limit us are present and whether that is something we can resolve at the level of skill, for instance, or whether that's something which resides more in our, our sense of identity. So then it enables a, a sort of different, different pattern responses to these different aspects of our experience. I won't read through them, but hopefully you're, I mean, if you're interested in those, that's something I can pass on. The, um, the sixth level, the sort of the vision, mission, and so what am I here for? for me really resonates with what Hahnemann, the founder of homeopathy, describes as the highest purpose of our, our existence. And just for good measure, I've thrown a little bit of Hahnemann in here. This is his aphorism number nine. In the healthy condition of man, the spiritual vital force, the dynamis that animates the material body, rules with unbounded sway and retains all parts of the organism in admirable, harmonious, vital operation as regards both sensations and functions, so that our indwelling, reason-gifted mind can freely employ this living, healthy instrument for the higher purpose of our existence. It's fantastic stuff. So the action learning pathway and professional development process um, put down some strong roots for me, growing my awareness of the roles that I really wanted to be playing in the world, a sense that they are creative and connective, catalyzing positive change with respect and love in my interactions with all that is around me. Okay, and now I'm going to move us on round the year. Here we are at three o'clock in the morning, or Imok. So the hours immediately before dawn, or that place of creativity, just as the, as the, the spring is in the air, movement towards the energy of the east of sunrise. So relatively early on in the diploma process, a sense started to emerge for me that the diploma might support quite a fundamental shift in my way of being. And over the course of the next years, the observe and interact process of rereading and re-exploring the action learning pathway kept me tuned to the intention behind the change process as life and work ebbed and flowed around me. My next two designs stayed in zone one, but with land-based designs. I chose to focus my second design on the kitchen garden immediately outside my back door and the third on the conversion of a row of 30 foot of unusable sheds in that same area of the garden to create a music and art workshop. At this stage of my permaculture pathway I found it really helpful to work with and learn from the application of permaculture principles on the land-based project. To feel into the physicality of the principles and to experience the influence of sectors and zones. To work with a system that was so close to me and constantly called me to observe what was happening and to learn and to explore and tweak the way the system worked on the basis of my own growing experience and what was growing around me. It reinforced the same pattern I'd learnt in the action learning pathway of observing, interacting, designing, observing and tweaking and also a process of being with, gaining insight and deepening my awareness as this continued. The design principles explored during this design embedded themselves in me and in my partner so that the way that we work in the garden now is an ongoing source of exploration, support and new ideas informing us and making sense of our learning. It's been a fantastic thing to share with my partner as well. So the land here is short on sunshine hours, heavy clay, long frost pocket winter times, water logging, clay dry in winter and there's a cold wind that tears up the valley from the north. 
Finding a way of working positively and creatively with the elements here has required repeated returning to permaculture principles, principles for solutions and suggestions. This is what it was like when we moved in. And this, these are a few shots of this autumn, summer autumn. Going to the basics of building up fertility and resilience of the earth through mulching has felt key, as has understanding and working with the influence of sectors. At each stage, the process of evaluating and tweaking offered insight and opportunities for change and development. And it's, it's felt exciting and impactful to go on working in this way. So the next design was the, the garden workshop. And this was one of the most challenging of all the designs, not because of the build itself or for the, or the earth elements, but because of relational elements. And the sort of the, the relational elements, particularly of the builder friends who helped us realize the design. Um, and it's been interesting on on sort of earthy or land-based designs to to feel that influence of the relational and then as you'll see later on the the land in the relational so we work with um, the guidance of permaculture principles and they held us in a place of adapt adapt adaptability to opportunities and helped us maintain a clear vision of where we were heading as vision as questions arose at the build uh, there was lots of learning here about flipping limits and about having clear functions as we, that we required of the space and that made for quick answers as the as design questions emerged. So moving on round, here we are in the east, sunrise, early morning, place of inspiration. And um, my next design was a deep dive into stuck patterns in an organisation. So I began this design in 2016 when HGN or the Herefordshire Green Network was six years old. By then with changes in council funding over the previous couple of years, it was a, an organization that was being run on an entirely voluntary basis, but it provided support and coordination for more than 40 local activist groups, as well as coordinating standalone events and countywide events and activities. The network was felt to be of great value by local people, but it was really vulnerable to burnout, in particular my own burnout as I was the volunteer coordinator. So I approached the design using Sadimet and I drew in Luby's design web as my analysis, which felt like a really, it gave me that sort of a very solid grounding in Sadimet, but then using the design web to, to bring in creativity felt, felt really, really valuable there. I also used Hong Grem's principles and that brought more insights and um, evolved some simple core functions and a design process that has then really supported the organisation through a period of, of quite considerable growth and development. Um, <clears throat> the design was implemented with the support of a timeline and SMART goals uh, and the resulting change has been impressive. The network now supports more than 80 groups locally there's funding for three days a week of paid work combined across a network coordinator and a project coordinator who works with parish councils. The organisation accommodates a wide range of views across its membership and is really trusted by local statutory bodies in the county and seen as a point of connection with local grassroots communities and representatives of Green Network are now regularly invited to sit on statutory boards. For me, this design enabled um, understanding of the patterns of change the, and using the value of, of patterns of change, particularly the value of moving from a more, moving towards a more hierarchical way of working, which initially felt really at odds with the collective leadership model that we'd evolved through our early days of shared working as the network developed. But the change enabled our rather lumbering tanker of an organisation to to turn and respond more quickly, like more like the sort of shoal of fishes. Um, and we put together a, a member based steering group and a leadership model that's now based on sort of flocking hierarchy. And ultimately, this design process also supported me to step back first from the coordinator role and then from the steering group, leaving the network to go on without me, which I'm very happy to say with a deep breath that it still does. So moving on round, now in the southwest, busy morning time, springtime energy. 
this is um, a place equated with motivation of activity. So having come halfway around my design journey, including my halfway interview with Luby, my portfolio journey went a bit cold. My, vote, my own motivation was busy over in other directions, and despite the ongoing checking and tweaking of designs that I'd previously developed, I'd lost quite a bit of my forward progression. Sometime later, in January 2019, sitting around a kitchen table talking with close friends Lou and Robin, it became apparent that they would like some help to change their tarmac car parking area into a veg patch. This opportunity came like a breath of spring air, the chance to apply my learning to date, to deepen my understanding of the permaculture design process, a chance to work with clients, and it all opened up a feeling of excitement and potential. Our design had two key aims, one the development of a garden itself, and the second to explore the opportunity to bring biodiverse nature back into this village centre car parking space where over the last century there had been the village garage and petrol pumps. This is a, is a photo of the house itself and the garage that was there. So the history of this rectangle of land presented a great opportunity to mitigate some of the problems caused to the local environment by the garage and the tarmac. Vegetation plays an important role in the global PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon cycle. And our planting schemes explored ways of remediating the contaminated site. Over the course of the design process, I find myself considering the effect a landslide or a flood might have in a situation like this, bringing earth and nutrients to sit on top of the tarmac area and imagining the gradual process of rebirth of nature as birds bring in seeds and start to create habitable environment above the earth, with roots eventually reaching down through the tarmac as it weakens. Because Lou and Robin were concerned about the potential that the earth under the tarmac might be contaminated with oils and PHCs, I designed deep raised beds for fruit and veg growing, giving careful consideration to the distribution and uptake of nutrients and water for, within the beds. I worked with a design based on hugel culture within the raised beds themselves and introduced the idea of regular mulching and guild planting to ensure the ongoing vitality to vitality of planting schemes. Having completed the design in spring 2019, no one had the time to take the ideas forward on into implementation, and I felt sure this would become just a paper-based exercise, although that had in itself been really helpful. However, in the depths of lockdown gloom in the early spring of 2020, Lou and Robin started sending photos. The garden was developing. And this is the outcome now, 18 months later, a really beautiful and abundant garden that includes veg growing raised beds, a pond, a wet garden, fruit bushes, small trees, a seating area and a fire pit, abundant bird and insect life, and even a small area of lawn where they, they, there was a, an area of lawn was being dug up in the, in the village and they said, we'd like to try it and just put it down on top of cardboard and mulches and it's flourishing. My hope with the design was to help Lou and Robin create a space that they will continue to enjoy for years to come and that will provide them with fresh produce and a place of nature connection. And it's really joyful to see this already happening. There's Lou enjoying her garden. So another design worked around the same time in 2019 was a design for group work based session exploring feelings of climate grief. So a session on, on climate grief. The session was called In Thin Air and my aim in using permaculture in the design process for this session was to explore broadly around the design of the session itself but also to gain understanding about applying permaculture design to a session like this and at this stage in my diploma and this was particularly useful to design and deliver and then reflect on a completed permaculture design process. So the design and the delivery of this session itself is something I've often come back to. This was by far the shortest of my diploma designs, but in many ways one of the most important for my own personal learning. 
Applying permaculture to the, to the design enabled me to explore creatively around the possibilities for the workshop itself. And I loved working with a range of resources, in particular the books and teachings of Joanna Macy, and also of Lucy Neal, a book called Playing for Time, which was produced by the Transition Network UK. The design meant that I had a wide range of approaches available to me when the challenges of the setting became apparent as the workshop began. Unexpectedly, it also shone a light for me on the correspondences between Gestalt systems approach and the permaculture systems approach, something which I've since explored further. This is the, the dome at the festival where, where the workshop took place. So Holmgren's <clears throat> permaculture principles created layers of understanding and opportunity about the way the workshop could develop. And looking through the lens of principles remains one of the most valuable permaculture design tools I use. The workshop also taught me about the importance of considering the physical environment in a social permaculture setting. It evokes just as pot a potent effect here as in any other permaculture design setting, rather like remembering to consider the relational in, in a land-based design. I found a discussion of active hope at the end of the session that I ran incredibly uplifting. And I've since explored more ways to draw Joanna Macy's work into my approaches with groups. Ultimately, I came away from this design with the recognition that our very real grieving is vital in our process of coming to terms with what's happening in our world and our need to find meaning and create hope. Moving on round the wheel of the year, here we are in the south, at summer solstice at noon, high noon, midsummer sunshine, growth reaching towards its full potential, a time of focus, the great turning point of the year, the days beginning once more to shorten, connecting us back once again towards our inner worlds. At this stage of my portfolio work through the spring and summer of 2020, the time was characterised as all our lives were at this stage by the pandemic, a period of intense change and challenge for so many, <clears throat> pattern disruption on an unprecedented scale. There was a feeling of the world becoming smaller and of our global network of communications becoming quicker a sharing of news, story, books, film, song, communications that highlighted social injustice, isolation, deprivation, feelings of fear and threat, but that also brought about a strengthening of feelings of human kindness and connection. And this quietness and stillness of the early lockdowns and the growing of feeling of connection reached on into our relationship with the natural world. In the summer of 2019, going back a year, <clears throat> I had joined Luby, John Young, Maddie Harland and Starhawk at Applewood for the Peace Course. This was my first really deep introduction to cultural emergence. It was an experience that has resulted in me weaving nature connection and gratitude practices into my daily routines. And it also continues to nudge me to consider ways of working with people to address trauma and to address our separation from the other than human world. So in the spring of 2020, it rushed to meet us. That spring filled the vividness and void of our pandemic shock with the warmth of blossom and birdsong. As we caught our breath in disbelief of what might be ahead, the spring greeted us with comfort and reassurance. And in the absence of people, we moved quietly back into the companionship of birdsong and trees. There was a feeling that Robin Wall Kimmerer describes in Braiding Sweetgrass, the land knows you even when you are lost. Over this time, I began the FIT course with Luby and with Lucy Walton and a few of the others who are here today. We met online monthly to share our progress and process and to nurture and support each other over this most strange of times. The course started midwinter in the changed and liminal space amidst, lockdown, amidst the lockdowns, a place where we were betwixt and between. This was the context for our work together over the year. We were very challenged, very awake and the rhythm of our monthly MOG starting and often closing with a shared visualisation or meditation wove a quietness and a place of pause between us. So this is where I started my next design. Thinking like a tree, bringing together elements in a way that they can flourish.
Postcards from Cuddly Moor is a series of four albums of original music created by myself and my partner as our duo, Alula Down. The albums draw their influence and structure from the soundscape of the land where we live and from our musical interaction with the physicality of place, season and local ecology. The four albums chart the movement of the seasons and the interplay of sounds around us, as well as the influence and events of the world at large and of course our inner landscapes from June 2020 through to spring 2021, as we moved through successive lockdowns and pandemic loss. It was a design that filled many functions, giving it real resilience and for us integrating our arts practice into our daily lives in a way that we couldn't previously have imagined. I used Mollison and Slay's permaculture principles here and found they inspired a really different way of thinking when applied to a, an artistic design process. I base the design process on appreciative inquiry and combined the appreciative inquiry 5D cycle with the five principles of appreciative inquiry. And I found that really thought provoking, sort of stacking them together and stacking them alongside permaculture principles and against the background of cultural emergence teaching. So it's just a real richness of, of all the different, different sort of uh, stimulus for, for creative thought. The design drew its structure, as this presentation does, from the Eight Shields model, um, along with the Celtic seasonal cycle of ritual and celebration, and drew in exploration of traditional folk songs across the seasons of the year. It also created space for spontaneous work based in musical improvisation around found sounds from the local, local landscape. And it, it enabled an opportunity for my creative writing and artwork as well as printed postcards from Godly Moor. And these are a couple of the postcards. And I really hoped I would be um, intelligent enough with the technology to play you some of it here, but I haven't quite managed that. But I can send links to anybody who's interested to hear some of that. So action. That same summer, I was invited by Herefordshire Council to join a steering group of people who would start to address the climate and ecological emergency locally by producing a carbon reduction action plan for Herefordshire. Given the background of my work with local communities, I was tasked with writing a chapter for this plan on community engagement. The permaculture design process provided a steadying framework that enabled my, me to extend and clarify my vision for this piece of work, whilst also connecting me to my deeper purpose and aspirations and obstacles in undertaking the work. Permaculture ethics are particularly relevant, were a particularly relevant framework, um, are a framework to consider the output from this design. Earth care, my energy to engage with the council came from my own deep feelings about care for the earth and the sense of urgency to respond to the climate crisis. Um, people care, working with permaculture design process here enabled me to care for myself uh, and make some sense of the huge input of volunteer time that I was surprised to find was expected of me. Also working closely with others who found themselves in the same situation and providing mutual support for each other. And fair share, my aim with the design was to ensure that the council's approach was properly inclusive of, of the needs of those less represented or marginalised locally and accessible to all. And to create a way of working in the county that draws on conscious stewardship and stays within the decreasing of resources available to us. One of my key points of learning was to apply land-based permaculture design approaches to provide grounding when a social or personal situation feels overwhelming. I also really saw the potency of cultural emergence core routines again here and used the Nourish and Empower, Challenge and Awaken, Move and Invigorate routines as a framework to consider how to respond to community needs. Right. Moving on round the year, here we are in the southwest at Lammas, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, early August, ripeness and fullness, a time for relaxation. So this is the time mid-afternoon when the in the summer when everything goes quiet, when the birds and the movement of the wind are quiet. There's only the hum of the bees amongst the blossom in the trees, not blossom leaves, 
The world snoozes and we replenish before the activity of evening. It's the time late summer when the birds have quietened their territorial songs and are just keeping in touch. When we gather in readiness for the harvest, finding new momentum in our community for the work and celebrations ahead. So the last of my diploma designs is a design that meets at several edges. It's the edge between the varied things I do now, considering how to find a core way of working that draws them together. The edge between the diploma, the permaculture diploma design process and the cultural emergence design process. The edge between that habitual way of working described in my action learning pathway and the emerging realisation that I'm bringing creativity, curiosity and play into a more prominent place into my day to day working life. The design aimed to focus on my next steps towards becoming a facilitator of cultural change, cultural emergence. I used a process that drew in a number of tools I hadn't used before, including the golden circle, why, how, what. I also returned to work with zones and considered potential growth points in each. Since the action learning pathway, the extent, expansion outwards energy of work with zones continues to provide me with a really valuable felt sense of my own okayness and where my energy is being pulled and how this is affecting me. I also enjoyed applying Kate Raworth's donor economics model to my own personal resources. The donor economic, economics identifies the sweet spot in which humanity can thrive and explores how we can create within those limits thriving cultures, businesses, communities and cities. So applying this model to me and to my design uh, gave me a really simple assessment tool uh, of the way that a design might function in practice, helping me to identify areas where I tend to overpromise or deplete myself, overshoot, and areas where there is potential for further development, shortfall. It really highlighted for me the extent to which community organising takes me way out beyond my limits. And it was really useful to draw this out visually and see it so clearly, and then ultimately finally to make changes to my working week to address that problem. The design still feels really aligned to where I am currently in terms of work commitments and emerging opportunities as I complete the permaculture diploma process. So here we are in the West, autumn equinox just past, early evening, coming together to close the day to tell our stories and some appreciation. Permaculture describes interconnectedness. Mollison's beautiful diagrams showing the movement of energy through a system invite awareness of interactions, of the energy between all things, of influence and beneficial connections. It's a common sense awareness that encompasses both the real and the magical, the day-to-day -day and the universal, and invites from us the profound simplicity and quietness of deeply, ob deeply observing and becoming involved. Gestalt theory also describes this sense of the influence we each have on a system. The whole is other than the sum of the parts. When things come together, something new emerges. Gestalt describes contact and awareness of elements in our environment that disrupt contact. Every experience is relational. Even being ourselves is a continuous dynamic process of selfing in relation to the other. We gain awareness of ourselves through direct experience of what is observable around us, what our senses perceive. This means individuals and groups are understood as embedded in their context and dependent on or emerging from a web of relationships and interactions. Just as permaculture and deep ecology describe the world as a complex of interrelationships, in which each existence is dependent on others in the system. The Gestalt approach requires that we integrate, not segregate, that we hold a space for ourselves, our whole selves to be involved, Curi curious about the influence of other elements in the system. This understanding is powerful, particularly when we view this pri primal movement towards interrelatedness described by systems thinking in the context of our separation, the separation felt by so many of us between us and the human, between us and the and ourselves and the other than human world, and even from each other. When we started creating music from the sounds around us on Common Hill, 
we were exploring into what lies in the between of our relationship here and our surroundings. Aware of the feeling of being with the birds and the trees, the plants and the creatures, and acknowledging that relationship. Moving into a place of reciprocity. Aware that we are involved and in dialogue and choosing to explore our responses to that experience. David Abrams describes the ecology of sensory experience. That is the way the activity of our eyes, of our ears, of our tongue, our nostrils, function to bind our separate nervous systems into the encompassing ecosystem, as though our animal senses actually work almost like a kind of glue, binding our individual neural system into the wider ecology, the wider ecosystem. And John Young's inspiring teaching on wisdom cultures around the world describes their ability to fully inhabit their body and sensory systems, realising both their oneness with nature and their own unique role within that larger pattern or system. He describes the felt sense of that relationship, as do shamanic teachers. Again, that feeling that we are involved and that the birds and the trees are as aware of us as we are of them. The sense of this energetic presence of the other than human world resonates for me again, this time with homeopathy and the energy signatures that describe the therapeutic potential of substances as diverse as the feather of a bereaved hoopus swan, the petals of a flower that grows at the foot of a mountain or a piece of gold. I'm aware of the potential each of these substances has to heal trauma by coming into relationship with us. And that feeling resonates with the magical. A magical that is akin to the way land holds connection to the deep past or the deep time unfolding of life and season. A magical that is actual, observable and in which we can participate. Here we are back at the northwest, Sawang, slowness and quietness. So my own next challenge and awaken is to extend this work for myself, both in my own professional work with people locally and also towards the creative edge of exploration and development of my own nature connection practices. Arriving here now feels like a significant point of development for me personally and professionally. Against the continuing backdrop of the climate crisis and now pandemic challenges, I'm very aware of new ways that I'm drawn to work integrating the creativity of my love for land and people and bringing this into being in a way that inspires hope and catalyzes positive transformative change in the world a way that is more about being than doing and a way that enables a feeling of self as in and of nature my journey through the diploma has been far from quick and the principle of small slow solutions has been a creative and grounding companion throughout Exploring the varied strands of my working life through permaculture and permaculture design has grown me some deep roots of the change I hope to be. Moving this on into cultural emergence feels as though it brings these intentions out into the light. It's starting to find their, their expression. So I'll finish with gratitude. Huge and heartfelt thank yous to Luby and to all my teachers, including Steve Jones, Chris Evans, John Young, Maddie Harlan, Starhawk, Lucy Walton, and also to all of my colleagues and peers in both permaculture and cultural emergence. What an inspirational and amazing group of creative people. I finish with the cultural emergence of the principle of cooperating hearts. I feel like I'm working with a network of remarkable people around the world and I feel really blessed to be working with you all. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Kate. Um, sorry, my internet has cut out, so I'm on my phone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, great. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Um, wow, really amazing. I'm sure um, that we would all maybe like to just unmute for a moment and just give you um, maybe rather than a clap, a whoosh. I know there's fit people on the course that will not under will resonate with our culture of giving uh, this big whoosh of encouragement and gratitude for your sharing today so you all ready <laughs> for whooshing what? What? Unmute. Whoosh. Whoosh. thank you so much brilliant a lovely beautiful global whoosh for
for you. Um, yeah, really amazing. I just feel really honoured to have been part of this journey with you and um, just so it feels so holistic, bringing so many threads of your life together. And it really feels that uh, as well as expanding yourself um, through and your work through this journey with the diploma, you've also been expanding permaculture um, with, with your portfolio. So it's really amazing and really look forward to seeing what happens next on your journey with permaculture and cultural emergence. Um, yeah, wonderful. Uh, if anyone would like to put some reflections in the chat for um, for Kate to read afterwards, um, maybe there's a, been a phrase that she said that you really loved, like I, I know at the beginning you said, stars tickling your toes, and I thought, wow, what an amazing phrase that was. So there's a phrase that resonated with you or sparked um, your imagination in some way if you could put that in the chat or if there's a reflection gratitude that you'd like to put in the chat do that um, and um, we're opening up for questions now I'm I'm a little bit well I can't see at all or the chat or anyone else so Kate I need to rely on you to actually <laughs> spot who wants to ask a question um, and, um, and we'll give um, preference um, first of all, to anyone that's on the peer group that would like to ask Kate a question. Maybe it's a clarifying question, or maybe it's about the frameworks, principles that she used, or um, yeah, or anything else about her diploma journey. Lovely. Thank you, Libby. I can see that Alan's got a question. Go for it, Alan. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm quite emotional. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but that's okay as well. So, in my prolific notes, I had to use an entire A3 sheet. Um, but I've only used eight of the 12 colours available to me. So, um, the bit I'm interested in, there's loads of stuff, but it's a fascinating honesty uh, around you get halfway, your interim portfolio assessment, it's great, uh, you're learning loads, you've got momentum, and then you hit a wall. Mm -hmm. So could you just open up a little bit more, you know, a minute or two on just what it was that helped you recognize that and then gain momentum? I know you described the sixth project, mm -hmm. but how you dealt with that kind of high and then low it's a funny thing because in a way i feel as though at that time permaculture had already become quite uh an Im embedded in the way that i was um and in, in the way that i i approach things and it was almost that it, it just it wasn't any longer so explicit and uh, it, it had just gone quite and i think it was having the opportunity um to to coin a cultural emergence phrase to, to come out and come into the light again. It was that that request from Lou and Robin was was so timely and just such a fantastic opportunity and sort of did then give me the momentum to to take it on and to start applying it in the actual. Actually, it's a bit like some of the feedback Barbara has given me in emails of just, you know, just do it sort of was was and, and it, it was that I think it just somehow it took me into a place of just do it and enable the next stage. Yeah. George? Okay, I, so thank you, Kate. That was really lovely. Um, as I shared with you before uh, by written, I was, I got so emotional as I started to read your design. So, and now listening to your presentation was really, really, poetry <laughs> and um yes so mm, i relate to a lot of things that you expressed about your personal path also uh, the music uh, component and um, um the, the the i really appreciate the graphics you inserted there and i i wanted to ask you as i'm going through this process also myself so 
how did you deal how did you deal with all the information all all the principles and ethics and core routines from uh, several inspiration sources that you got along the way and because uh, i really found lovely that you uh, were able to weave it all in you know that's that's brilliant yeah thank you um i think actually one of the things i found was that by um deciding as i set out on a design which of the principles i so it was a sort of like it was a which which of the, of the toolbox am i going to choose for this design um and then that meant that i was able to not only delve deeply into the design but also delve deeply into that particular those particular tools so for instance on the the postcards using mollison and slay's permaculture principles um was was it was fantastic to work with those having previously worked with holmgrams and also with mollison's um the ones the the um his principles from the designer's manual and obviously from using the cultural emergence principles so i think it's that thing it's a, a almost sort of limiting the toolbox for a design the design sort of gives you that opportunity to play with particular tools and i found that really really helpful barbara um yes i was wondering how did you pick these uh, de design methods why did you pick the methods for the various designs um <clears throat> i think to begin with back at the beginning of the journey it was the design method that the tools that i was aware of and so it was it was partly it's it almost like a sort of zone process of you know these are the ones i know i i'll try these and then it was expanding on out from there and then oh well you know so for for one of the much later ones you know i'll try i'll try appreciative inquiry that would be really interesting but that's one that's sort of right out on the the outer edges it's going on out into the beyond the woods into the world to see what else i can bring in so it was starting with with what i knew i think Uh, Lucy. Um, it's just lovely, Kate. <laughs> I, I was really pleased that Barbara just asked that question because I was sort of quite curious about whether, because you were bringing in other frameworks, which I felt weren't necessarily those that you'd come across in permaculture, and you were just then weaving everything in and literally uh, feeling your way. And so I just felt as though it was becoming more and more complete as you were going on. Um, I have a practical question, which was just about... Um, the software you use, um, how you pull all that together, because the presentation was beautiful. Oh, thank you. That was just PowerPoint <laughs> doing its thing. <laughs> and um, and photos and just, yeah, play, playing, actually play, I think is, is um, yeah, playing with PowerPoint, playing with photos and um, that really. Thank you. Hilda, you've got a question. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for sharing your your journey. It was beautiful to watch and inspiring. Um, I have questions. Um, I am curious to know um, what is the main change you noticed in your diploma pathway after you took the cultural emergence uh, course? The main one after the cultural emergence course. Yeah, like what kind of change did you feel in your um, way of approaching permaculture? I think um, I think it felt embodied in a way that it, it hadn't done up until then. Up until then, it was almost, um, although I was engaging very much with the land around me and with, um, with permaculture principles, um, something about the the experience of um, the nature connection practices and um, the the core routines of cultural emergence just just brought it to a, a place where yeah it was it was it was embodied it was it was um, grounded somehow and um, Yeah, a, a much a much deeper sense, but then also this this feeling that that I also was was provided with tools to, and um, it sort of grew my confidence to to share to share much more of, uh, of what I was doing. It it moved it from something which felt quite 
head and paper based, I suppose, into something that just felt very present and filled with potential. Um, can I ask another one? Yeah, you go. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you did like check in with the ethics uh, in the start of its uh, design journey. I certainly kept them in my mind. Yeah. And um, it's something that I came back, I went went back through, I, I sort of checked in after rather than before, but they were they were certainly present. Yeah. They, and and I think, as I said, I had this this feeling that the ethics are, are something which are so deeply part of of me that it was almost it almost felt like a bit of a paper exercising checking the boxes on them but but again really valuable to do that but it was something that I did in retrospect rather than at the very beginning of each design it would have mm -hmm. been interesting to do it the other way around but mm. thank you thank you Nobody else? I have one more, more than. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a guilt supporting you through your journey? No, and I wish I had. And actually, I think that's the other thing that made a big difference in the last phase, uh, because once I was on the, the fit pathway, I did have a guild. I had the fantastic, um, my, my colleagues who were also on the, on the fit pathway, quite a number of whom were, have done or are doing um, their, their permaculture diplomas. And... Um, yeah, and noticing that that Luby and uh, Devon, um, De oh dear, <laughs> my head, head's gone. Delvin, Delvin, <laughs> Delvin. I know a Devon and a Delvin uh, are doing the, the guild. I think it's a great idea. Would be would be a really supportive thing. It's certainly something I would have would have enjoyed and valued. Mm. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So um, my internet's decided to work again. Um, so is, has everyone on the peer group now asked a question if they wanted to? Don't see any more hands, so. Oh, Alan's um, one, I think. Okay, uh, so another one from Alan and then we'll open it up to if anyone else has a question. Sure. So you, wow, again, I'm still emotional. <laughs> um, so you made reference both within your presentation and within the documentation that the time to complete your diploma was more than the so-called standard two years minimum. And without being judgmental, it's not as long as my decade long one. <laughs> so, but what came out for me was that both in what you've told us in this presentation and within your documentation was you grew as a person because of the length of time that you had to look back over the embedding of the learning. So if there's, you know, if there's a, a way you want to reflect in this concluding bit, um, I'd love to hear what you feel now about that. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that it was that something about that longevity. I mean, partly it meant I had the benefit of working with Luby for a very long time, which was great. Um, and I've definitely benefited, benefited from that. Um, I, I think just that feeling that it was, it's been present with me um, throughout throughout this this these years, um, this this and it has felt like it's it's uh, quite a it's been a slow process of change, but that that feeling that the change is is really embedded because of the because it's been slow, small slow solutions does feel like it it just really captures that. It's, yeah, does that answer your question, Alan? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. It's really interesting hearing these. Uh, last reflections as well. Um, does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? Kate. Oh, George. George another one. Um, how do you feel, Kate? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> So that I actually said that again, George, I sort of missed it. <laughs> yeah. 
How do you feel, Kate? What do I feel? Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you envision your next steps forward? Yeah, I, I feel I feel really relieved, but that's that's done. I was a bit nervous to be honest. Um, my next steps forward, I feel um, I feel really excited about the next steps forward. Actually, I can see them. I can I can see there are opportunities emerging already um, to work with with cultural emergence and permaculture uh, locally, which is really exciting and um, and. You know, we also there are quite a lot of, of people who are in, engaged in, in cultural emergence and permaculture locally, so I'm I'm really lucky with that. Um, and and just also this feeling that um, uh, this sort of pathway of of being with and being in nature that that feeling of being involved that the sort of nature connection practice that feels like an incredibly exciting. And you know, a, a journey that will stretch on ahead of me for for always. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a great feeling. So I've got the dog and the cat here who are both deciding that they want things to happen now. Because <laughs> you mentioned nature connection, they're like, yeah, that's us, that's us, we're here. <laughs> Don't forget us. Yeah, lovely. Um, so I'm not seeing anyone else with questions um no no questions uh okay mm, I, um i have a last one um for you kate um what was your highlight of your diploma journey or well, one of the highlights oh, maybe yeah there's so many <laughs> oh, <highlight. laughs> yeah. There are so many um Well, two come to mind. Um, one was that summer at Applewood, which was fantastic, the, the peace course at Applewood. Um, and the other is the, the, the music, the, uh, the postcards process and, um, and that, that it was recognised and that when we, um, when we communicate out to people, you know, when, when people who've, who've listened to the, the postcards communicate with us that they send, they always send a little message which includes um, something about their home environment, something about something they've observed, you know, they'll say, thank you for the music and la 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 and, and I, I, today I noticed this thing, you know, and it's, it's, it's just beautiful to feel that those sort of ripples of connection, that's, that's been a, so the design, the design of that, that whole design and, um, and the implementation of that design and the, the effect it feels like it's had has been really lovely yeah mm, that's beautiful and a really lovely place to to close our session to feel the ripples of your work going out and i know that the ripples of your presentation today will ripple out into all of these people's lives and i know that there'll be people that will watch this afterwards as well and 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 we're, I'm sure some of us will go back and watch it again because it was just really amazing. And um, we'll we'll release this and um, we'll put if you also include the um, link to your music as well. I'm sure people will really in, enjoy that. And um, yeah, it's just been really um, lovely. And it feels also like that this, as you started saying this was a, an ending, it's also a beginning and recognizing that. And I, I do feel that this is a, a beginning of the, of the work. And yeah, thank you for being part of the cultural emergence um, journey as well. And that's, you know, it feels so fitting that this has happened on the same day as our, the, the year anniversary of cultural emergence as well. And you've been real part of that journey. So thank you personally for that as well as um, collectively for being part of the permaculture diploma. So, um, so we'll, we'll all open our mics and give a whoosh. And then if any, if you're on the peer group, if you just stay in the meeting for a minute, but we're after we've just closed it with another big whoosh so if you'd like to all unmute and and, uh, and just rub your hands and just feel all that inspiration that Kate has just shared with you just 
feel that go rippling into your own life and rippling out into the world and all that inspiration now rippling back to Kate with this big whoosh that's coming on the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, oh, Thank you. Just feel all that love and appreciation. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. We really, so really appreciate that. And thank you everyone for coming and spending your time.